Hey guys, I'm Simon, and welcome back to our architecture tour of Portal 2. This is Chapter 3, The Return, and I guess we'll find out what is returning. Uh, she's gonna start talking to us soon, I'm pretty sure. Okay, she's not talking to us. What is that thing doing? That's really creepy. Anyway, chamber number 9, we are doing the thermal description beam, and the cubes, and the area of faith plates. That's really confusing when, when she does that, or when the game does that. Like, Whenever something moves, you think to yourself, well, maybe I should be paying attention to it. And in that case, like... It actually doesn't... Like, that doesn't actually mean anything. The wall just moves out and then... I don't know, but just keep in mind that, you know, when you're designing an environment, whether a game or a real-life environment, if things move, or if it flashes colors or stuff like that, then usually you... Hey, it's me! I'm okay! Well, I'm back. The aerial faith plate in here is sending a distress signal. You broke it, didn't you? Uh... There. Try it now. Yeah, so whenever something moves, you... pay attention to it. Like, it's almost impossible to avoid that. What happened, right? I was just lying there? You thought I was done? Mm. This plate must not be calibrated to someone of your generousness. I'll add a few zeros to the maximum weight. You look great, by the way. Very healthy. Try it now. <laughs> so she's making fun of your weight. But Wheatley is up there. Bird, right? Couldn't believe it either. You seem to have defeated its load-bearing capacity. Well done. I'll just lower the ceiling. So she lowers the ceiling. And then Wheatley is gone. That's pretty cool, isn't it? The storytelling. So I mean Wheatley Wheatley I suppose up till now he's helping you. Yeah he is. So he's helping you. GLaDOS is trying to... well, she's not your friend, and she's mean. And now Wheatley's trying to talk to you and she's getting in your way, so I guess that's not too complicated. Ouch. Right, so now we're here. That's pretty good storytelling, I think. Um, there's a lot of stuff going on here. Huh, there's an arrow pointing that way. Why is that useful? There's a button there, and the button goes to the cube. And there's a diagonal panel. I don't actually remember if there's a easy way to do this. I guess there isn't. Maybe there is and I just don't know about it. But I'll just do the puzzle. Uh, you can tell that it's a little bit complicated already, even this first part. The fact that you're meant to put a portal on the ceiling and it pushes you out. That's a new trick that we haven't done before. And here you have to use the fling and you have to use the thermal discouragement beam as a switch trigger. And you have to walk back and forth several times to get these things. First to release the cube, then to get the cube. And then... Uh, oh, I remember now. 
and then to get up there. I mean, there's, there's like four steps to this. Look at you, sailing through the air majestically, like an eagle, piloting a blimp. So there's four parts to this. But at the same time, like you can't really fail it. I mean, even if you just flail around and, and you don't know what you're doing, eventually you'll, you'll get it. Eventually you'll kind of press the switch and then you'll get the cube. Like there's no real way to fail it, it just maybe it will take you longer to figure out if you don't know what's going on. So again, the, the idea that puzzles... You know, there's no, there's no punishment here. There's no punishment here for, for... Well, in fact, you can't even fail. I was gonna say there's no punishment for failing, but... You can't fail. It just takes you longer. If you don't know what you're doing. And I guess that's like... Uh, maybe you consider to, that to be a bit casual. Casual game design, you know, you, there's no losers, only... Winners, but... You know, it is early on in the game. And I guess this is a casual game, in a way. But people have fun. People enjoy this enjoy game. Enjoy this next test. I'm going to go to the surface. It's a beautiful day out. Yesterday I saw a deer. If you solve this next test, maybe I'll let you ride an elevator all the way up to the break room. And I'll tell you about the time I saw a deer again. <laughs> Mind tricks, mind games. Oh dear, she can't actually go outside. She's stuck in that room. Why <laughs> she'll let you go up to the break room where she'll tell you about the deer again? It's pretty funny. Let's see what's going on here. So, oh, the faith fleet throws you up. Ah, Ramellis. Yeah, so the puzzles, well, you know, on the one hand, they're kind of complicated in the sense that there's, most of them are multi-part now, like there's, there's several different parts to it, but at the same time, you can't really fail them. I think I'm meant to get over to that side. Oh, I remember now. Or do I? Ah, there we go. See that? That's something I remember from the first game. I'm not sure if... The second game has actually... Taught you that... Very well yet. I'm... I don't think it has. Anyway, I don't actually remember this puzzle very well. And I think this just reinforces the idea that you can just do whatever and eventually you'll figure out what the answer is. And as you can see, like... Actually, maybe I'm not describing this very well. Like again, there's, there's multiple paths to this. You need to get the cube to block this to get past here. But let me just demonstrate to you what happens if we don't have the cube. Like imagine if you just started here, you didn't really see the cube, or you, you saw it in the distance, but you didn't think much of it, and you just jumped into here. Then you would smash into this wall, and up here you will see that. There's a switch here that you need to turn off. And the way to turn it off obviously is to get the cube and to block the beam. So we've done that already. So now what do you do? This is gone, but we can't go any further. So you jump into this again. And this time you hit that, and you hit another wall. And this time... You need the laser beam there, 
and you also have the switch to drop you the redirection cube which gets thrown up here let's see but you don't want it here you want it down here uh, let's just grab that put that there Oh, wait a minute. Oh, no, that's fine. Let's keep going. So now you want the laser beam there. And those actually make funny sounds when you activate them. That's kind of interesting. And now you need to get over there with the cube and notice there's the target for the aerial faith plate. And so you do that. And you get thrown onto here and you place the switch. Place the cube on the switch. Well, you passed the test. I didn't see the deer today. I did see some humans. But with you here, I've got more test subjects than I'll ever need. So again, there's multiple parts to it. But you have to solve one part before you can get to the other. Like, until you figure out how to block this beam, you can't get past the wall. And once you get past the wall, then you hit the next wall. And until you get past the next wall, you can't get up to here. So even though there's multiple parts to it, it's not like you can do it out of sequence. Like there's still only, really only one more. There's, there's a way to kind of glitch out the system. You can actually do some fancy uh, flinging to get past some of this. But anyway, let's just assume that you're doing this normally, like a normal person. So there's no way to, to mess it up. And again, there's no way to get it wrong, neither. It just maybe takes you a while to get it right. And of course, once you've figured all of that out, then the solution is you flying around back and forth this giant space, which is, as I said earlier, kind of fun, you know? You're flying through the air. And and GLaDOS makes fun of you for that as well, like you're soaring through the air like an eagle in a blimp. Like this. This is cool, right? Look at that. Whoa! So. So they designed the puzzle so that you can't fail it. You do it one step at a time. You have to do it one step at a time, even though at first glance it looks like a really big puzzle and a fairly complex puzzle, when in fact when you solve it, it's quite simple. And then once you've solved it, they reward you with the flying around the room like an eagle in the blimp. So that's kind of... I think that pretty much sums up the basic philosophy of puzzle design in Portal 2. Like even though potentially there's a lot of complex things you can do with these things they're giving you. Like the, the thermal discouragement beams and the cubes and the switches and the area of faith plates. But when you really look at it, the puzzles are actually fairly simple. What's this? Hard light bridges. So now they're introducing yet another element. Oh look, the symbols change. So they don't actually all fit on the same screen. But anyway, so the hard light bridge. The hard These light bridge. These bridges are bridge. made from natural light that I pump in from the surface. If you rubbed your cheek on one, it would be like standing outside with the sun shining on your face. It would also set your hair on fire, so don't actually do it. Uh... Okay. So hard light bridges are things that extend... Actually, they don't... See, again, like, they make a noise and they move around and they draw your attention. I just don't know how important that is. I guess it's... Like, it is, it's just flavor. It's not important that you see that. 
Yeah, well, it's not essential that you see that. I guess it adds a little bit to the story. Well, anyway, let's see. What are we doing first? There's a switch there. There's a thing that drops cubes there. And of course, I already know how to solve this because I've played this game before. Basically, you can extend these bridges out through portals. And... That. I, th I hope I got that right. Yep. So that and... oh wait, I need to press the button, don't I? Uh, where do I go to press the button again? Oh, wait a minute, I have to go over there to press the button. Ah, maybe I don't remember this as well as I thought I did. 